and configuration tools, uh, which are shipped with the SUSE products um, and uh, also in OpenSUSE. Uh, and basically, they um, <coughs> give us the UI um, to configure the system. And underneath, it uses the libraries uh, and the tools um, which you would normally use from the command line. Um, for those UI modules, um, underneath it uses the libuy ui which is the uh, interface engine which provides the abstraction layer um, you can develop your application in c uh, or ruby write it once and then your application will uh, work in qt jtk which is uh, at the moment um, the development is um, kind of slowed down and uh, that's why for rest api uh, we don't support it, and, and courses. And so you, you basically implement the UI once uh, using this abstraction layer, and then you can run your application uh, on the servers or also like on the uh, desktop installations where you would have um, uh, GNOME installs, for instance. Um, so what how is currently uh, the YES components are tested? So we have the unit tests. Um, uh, which are using the RSpec framework. So that uh, explains the um, our ch um, choice because we are also start with the RSpec and we plan to um, uh, uh, run those integration tests also with RSpec as a part of the uh, CI basically on, this, uh, on the same phase when the unit tests are also running. Um, and then we have the integration the system testing, which are um, running in the OpenK. Um, you might have heard about this tool basically uh, it's yeah uh, can be compared to the Swiss Army knife, where so it, it's capable of many things, uh, but for some tasks it, it performed them um, not that well because yeah you don't want to use the screwdriver from the uh, Swiss Army knife all the time. Sometimes you want uh, the full size screwdriver, um, and that was exactly the case uh, for us. Um, because um, uh, first of all to run those tasks. OpenK is heavily uh, heavy, and uh, for developers, they will have to spawn the whole environment um, to just run the tests. Um, it's also uh, use the uh, screen-based um, mechanism, um, which are um, very costly to maintain in case there are font changes or there are some changes in the UI. Therefore. Um, we yeah, came up with our solution. So briefly to des describe what, what is our spec, it basically um, we have a driven development framework. You can write the code um, <clears throat> there. So it provides the mocking mechanism and all other of the different assertion mechanisms. So it's pretty uh, rich in that sense. Uh, so yeah, um, it can be used easily for uh, unit integration testing uh, in the a terminology we have just mentioned and it also already has the built-in reporting cap capabilities um, so uh, pretty useful um, so to the rest api basically so we have the uh, our ui uh, and we want to operate it um, and not rely yeah on this some script based uh, tooling so what do we have developed uh, is that uh, we have the run the server side on the uh, application, so uh, it's dynamically loaded plugin uh, developed in C++, uh, which then starts the uh, HTTP server where you can uh, send the uh, request and op operate on the UI. And then uh, in this library, we will just uh, generate event to simulate the user input. So uh, it also includes some of the um, flows like uh, that's um, as many of those frameworks do that you, uh, originally um, you can also operate on some controls which are actually disabled in the code uh, so sometimes uh, in some cases it provides more capabilities than uh, the normal user would have so obviously yeah we still need to cover that part uh, somewhere else and not to miss the regressions in this field um, so uh, it provides not only the way to operate on the controls, but also to read the state of the properties, which is a uh, mentor for testing. So here you can see the example for uh, some sample application with just table in it. Um, so it lists the items um, which are currently displayed. Uh, there is also like the property, uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, big enough, uh, which shows if the um, which entry is currently selected. So you can verify those and also um, operate uh, that we'll 
uh, see later. Uh, so um, besides the uh, server side, we also have developed the, the client side. So to run the uh, to write the tests in the uh, R spec. Um, and yeah, so we started with the Ruby. Um, I, I will mention the further steps um, plan to do. Um, so yeah, we just basically use the functionality of their spec. Um, and uh, the advantage here that yeah, we just use the IDs of the controls. Uh, you can run the tests. Uh, besides some small exceptions, uh, your tests uh, can be run, executed in Qt and, and curses. So you basically can test both things. Um, at the same time uh, uh, without no extra cost for development. Um, so yeah, let me just uh, demo um, briefly what do we have. So uh, I've uh, written a small test um, to just de demonstrate the co capabilities. So there are some, yeah, uh, it's not ideal test. Uh, so we have the uh, YES module, which basically just um, demonstrates the content of the ETC hosts and uh, allows to edit it. Uh, and there are three uh, tests. One just verifies that there is a local host entry with uh, the loopback interface IP address. Um, and the one uh, which adds the new entry and then the one which deletes it. So we just can execute this test. I've introduced some um, slips into um, so that we can uh, see that because otherwise it would run really fast. So you can see that, yeah, we have entered the enters here uh, in this text fields, then we press OK, so the entry appeared here. Uh, then yeah, we'll just press the delete button and then close the application. Um, and then uh, we basically can do uh, the running end curses by just uh, starting it. There are like tricky parts and in wrapping it. Uh, so in case there are questions, I uh, can share more details about this. Um, and uh, yeah. As always during the presentation, something didn't work. Um, yeah, and basically we, we can run the same application in uh, end courses, uh, and the same test in end courses, and to do, do the same test. Um, right, so uh, for the third steps, I will start. Yeah, there are a lot of things to develop. So basically, uh, we want to start benefiting from uh, this framework already now. Uh, so we have um, quite some items to, to implement, including the support of HTTPS and uh, also as the in OpenK, our tests are mainly written in Perl. Uh, we develop, uh, we plan to develop also the uh, Perl module uh, for the client side support. Um, so yeah, uh, I've added some references um, in case you're interested because we aim here also to advertise a bit of this framework and if there will be some open source community around it, uh, that will be really, um, I will really appreciate that. So yeah, thank you for your attention. So are there any questions? Yeah, I guess like I'm right on time. So, but there is no other talk afterwards. So I guess maybe we can spend a couple of minutes. I know uh, there is one. Yeah, actually so, there is. Yeah, we had to yeah. reschedule service there. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. Uh, if you do have any questions um, uh, for Radon, uh, just uh, probably ping him on Telegram. Uh, I assume you're, you're on that, right? Uh, I will join. Yeah, I will join. Okay, cool, cool. So, and Sarah's talk is up next, and then we'll be right on schedule, and we'll have like a fifteen-minute break uh, between her talk and the other talk that we, I believe, to start. So, sounds good. Can you go ahead and uh, right on uh, stop sharing your screen, and Sarah, could you uh, go ahead?